Stop me if you've heard this one before. How many sides does the Pentagon have? Five. What causes disease? Bacteria. And then you skip the ad. The thinning, or as I like to call it, the thinning, has been one of the most overtly publicized YouTube Red productions that I have seen so far. YouTube Red originals are a bit of an anomaly, even to those who take part in the Red service. You see, YouTube Red supplies a number of services. It allows you to watch videos without ads while supporting your favorite creators. It allows you to download videos without off-site add-ons. It allows you to play videos and music videos without the app being open on your phone, or your phone even being on. And it supplies costly original movies and shows for the consumption of viewers. Now, if you were to tell the average Red user that they had access to a trove of videos which were completely free and open for them to view without charge, they would most likely respond, What, you mean like a YouTube video? The sad things about these shows is that they frankly fail to compete with even the most basic of YouTube content in terms of relevancy and actual quality. Very few people would ever choose to purchase YouTube Red to view any of the shows actually on the platform, because none of those products are best better than any of the stuff on the site that is free to begin with. That was until the hype surrounding a little project called Scare PewDiePie Season 2. This made a lot of people excited for the idea of viewing higher quality content on this platform, and many people paid high dollar to be able to see this clearly expensive project. It got cancelled because someone called PewDiePie a Nazi. So instead, it seems YouTube Red is attempting to fight the suicide of their most promising and publicized project by advertising their next creation up the wazoo. Unless you are using ad blocker and you never use your phone, I find it hard to believe that this hasn't popped up somewhere for you. Because for the rest of us, it has been absolutely everywhere. Now the film most notably stars Logan Paul, a vlogger who has been claiming to be an actor because he was in this this one movie, which he got a role in because he was a vlogger. Logan and his brother Jake have been two of the most controversial figures on YouTube for quite a long while, as Jake has been running around basically just being a public nuisance, breaking privacy laws by tricking people into being in his vlogs, stealing the personal information of famous musicians and then showing their houses on film, catching stuff on fire in his own pool. At this point, he's probably actually running out of things to do, he's done so much. I have one question for you. Yeah? What are those? <laughs> Also, he happens to be the worst musician of all time. It's every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. Five mil on YouTube in six months, never done before. The man is so untalented that he surrounded his posse with other musicians who are worse than him just to cover up for his own faults. Yes, I can rap and no, I'm not from Colton. England is my city. But Logan himself hasn't been doing anything nearly as bad as this. The most controversial thing that he's done outside of defending his brother has been his infamous video wherein he documented the cure to his color blindness as he looked up at a sunset, which has been heavily doubted by many people due to how much he seemed to exaggerate his condition. It's when colors blend. So, so like your bird's just one color to you. <laughs> What? He's all of those colors. He's orange, red, yellow. Maverick? Maverick is yellow. Oh, his whole body. The thinning is, to put it best, The Purge, but set in a high school. Now, if you're not familiar with The Purge, the conceit is that in some not too distant and not too probable future, the government has decided that the population is growing too much and that people have too many pent up issues and emotions that cause them to commit crimes. Because of this, for one day out of the year, a purge is declared to allow people to get the negative impulses and emotions out of their systems, while also culling the population a tiny little bit. The plot of The Thinning doesn't really call upon the whole pent-up crimes thing, but still depicts a situation where the government thinks the population is a little bit too high, and so they decide to kill people who don't get good grades. That is the plot of the movie. The story depicts a universe where failing to pass annual government-sanctioned tests causes you to be euthanized like a dog with rabies. You see, rather than going for a purge feel, where the film at least tries to explore how regular people would react to this situation if it were to take place, The Thinning uses this to create a thinly veiled allegory for how it feels to take standardized tests in the United States. 
As this is a movie starring Logan Paul, it is of course targeted at people in middle and high schools who dislike these tests, which, it should be said, are often meant not to gauge the students' talents, but the skills of the school in teaching the students. The movie starts off with the main female protagonist of the film, Peyton List. Peyton is a tutor helping one of her students prepare for a test, obviously the test, and after he struggles to figure out one of the equations, she agrees to sell him contacts which will help him cheat by giving him the right answers. I like to call this Cyber Adderall. Peyton has a bunch of siblings who are young and a mother who is dying. And up there she goes. The mom's death, as far as I can tell, hasn't really been caused by any of the depictions on how this universe works. I think she has like a real world disease that actually exists. So the only real purpose in this is to make us feel bad for the leading lady because her mom died or something. Meanwhile, at the governor's mansion, we meet our central male protagonist, who is apparently the son of the governor of Texas. Logan is sneaking out to go on a secret midnight date with his girlfriend. Now from here on out, things get a little bit confusing. You see, his girlfriend is not the same person from the start of the movie. It took me a while to catch up on this because they're both blonde and they both are virtually identical. The way I eventually started picking out the difference was that Logan's current girlfriend looks a bit like Miley Cyrus. So there you go. Paul and Miss Cyrus strip down and jump into a pool, but then the movie immediately decides that that's not very interesting. So it jumps to them in a car, making out, but then they're both caught by the big bad security guard, and Logan Paul is taken back to his disgruntled father. So Paul and his dad have this long standoff, wherein his dad is all like, You have a big test tomorrow, and it's important to your future. And Logan's all like, Whatever, man, I just do what I want. And then the governor's all like, You need to focus on your studies. Forget about the girl. And Logan is all like, Whatever, dad, shut up. And I'm just like, motherfucker, I get the whole teen rebellion thing, but if you do not get above an 80% on this test, they will euthanize you. For the love of God, just for once in your life, follow that stupid packet they give you. Eat a good breakfast, have an orange or something, get a good night's sleep, Jesus. So the next day, it's the big test, and security is high at the school. Hoping to get around to the fact that he is an idiot, Logan Paul approaches Peyton Lost and attempts to buy one of her Cyber Adderall pills. But he gets shut down because she just sold her last one. Afterwards, Peyton is approached by her nerd friend who asks if her brief conversation with Paul had romantic motivations. Platoon says that Logan didn't even get her name right, tragic since they've been in school together since the first grade. Well, it's almost as tragic as being in love with your best friend who's in love with a guy that doesn't even know her name. That's how people talk. There's this weird moment here where we see the nerd kid hacking, and it's animated the same way that my iPhone closes apps. Commence lockdown sequence. Yes, sir. I think this is supposed to be a comparison to how actual standardized tests go down, since they usually lock down certain hallways during the process. Although back at my place, that was done with, uh, with a chain. So the test begins, and right off the bat, a lot isn't adding up. First of all, the test is being done on one of their iPad things, which is a crazy idea that no schooling system would ever go forwards with. I mean, the nerd kid hacked one of these just by flicking his fingers up and down a bunch of times. Also, the lack of extra scratch paper seems unlikely. And isn't most of this just Algebra 1? You see, this isn't even realistic, because in a real high school, the test wouldn't even have started yet because there would have been one kid in the class who, upon being asked if there were any disturbances, would have said, Um, yes, actually, there's this hum. I can hear it from the roof. Maybe it's in the ventilation. It's, it's just, I can't concentrate on any, any questions if that hum is bothering me. And so the teacher would say, alright, you know, we gotta, we gotta adhere to, to what you're saying, we move to another class, set up for about 20 minutes, then she'd say, sorry guys, this class is, this isn't good because there's still the hum. And so we jump to another room, uh, going all around the goddamn school like a game of musical chairs, because one fucking idiot couldn't just ignore a goddamn hun for half an hour, one person couldn't just live with answering a couple questions without zzz going in their fucking back of the goddamn room for half an hour, and so we're jumping all around this school, and who does that kind of thing? Who does that? Who says I have to be the center of attention? All you guys have to adhere to my very specific will, because I've noticed a hum, I've noticed a goddamn hum, and I, I am mad. <laughs> Fuck! 
about the hum. I mean, the, the, the goddamn standardized tests weren't a problem. It was the goddamn hum people that would twist and turn the situation until it took up the whole goddamn day because they couldn't find the right suitable position where they could focus on a question without even the slightest of distractions. I mean, I, I mean, ah, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? So they announce all the people who have failed the test and thus will be killed. Which I think is the real problem with this system. You see, they're not rewarding success, they're punishing failure. Creating a culture with a lack of distinct, natural motivation. I mean, the whole if you don't pass you die thing makes up for it, I guess. Oh, also Miley Cyrus fails. Sad. Logan Paul tries to go all Schwarzenegger on the school's ass and starts trying to free his girlfriend. And when she gets the chance to run, the other students block her. Apparently not out of spite, but out of confusion for what they're supposed to be doing. Logan faces no repercussions, because in this world, the only law is that of an annual nine minute iPad test. No! Let him go! Let him go! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we switch the language? Sorry. We better hit it. it. One year later, we see both of our main characters preparing for their final test. One by studying and helping her siblings study, and one by doing jumping jacks. Ooh, baby. Now that's what I call fan service. Around here is where we meet one of the darkest characters in the entire movie. A teacher who has learned to use the thinning to his own advantage. Basically, this guy has potentially found out that the staff of the school can manipulate the results. Meaning that some people who get high scores fail and some people with low scores pass. And so he has used this as an opportunity to trade sex for passing grades with many of his students. Then on the actual test day, instead of actually doing what he promised, he does nothing and the student will fail anyways. Meaning that he's gotten away with presumptive statutory rape because he systematically made sure that all of his victims get killed by the government as soon as they realize that they've been screwed over. This is easily one of the most horrifying ideas in the entire movie, and it works in part because it's very specific to this situation, and not any that exist in similar fiction or in the real world. But don't worry, uncomfortable viewers, the rest of the movie is still pretty dumb. Hello? Do I look British? Do I look like a British person? What, what the? Out of the way, bitches. Wade Freeman, all-star quarterback. Represent! What the fuck what? was that? That's really funny. <laughs> That's what, that's what high school's like. <laughs> Fucking jocks, can you believe this asshole? Look at <laughs> Right? <laughs> Try again, pal. So basically, the purge test that all of these kids are about to take is the final that they have to, and Logan Paul has decided to commit suicide by pressing none of the correct answers on purpose. He mails his suicide video to his father, who gets it the same day because apparently in dystopian thinning Texas, mail goes super fast. <laughs> that was a five thousand dollar chair. Meanwhile, we see an elementary school taking their first purge test. Yes, Nathan. Oh, I don't know this one. Can you help me? Just do your best, okay? Why are they illustrating this world as exactly like ours, except they kill kids? It's so what's gonna kid. happen in Trump's America, Quentin? These <laughs> can't get out their damn I, I'd have like it's A bunch of them fail and get sent away to be killed. Yeah. I like the kid who's holding the pad against his face. Is there gonna be a is there gonna be a little twist about um people who play sports get like a curve? Mm. <laughs> that would be exactly like <laughs> real life. <laughs> God. But surprise, surprise, Peyton Lost fails the exam as well. What? How could this be? I'm a genius. Everybody <laughs> says so. <laughs> and Logan Paul passes despite putting all of the wrong answers and being Logan Paul. So Logan Paul goes full on ape shit again, breaks into the security room, sees some stuff, and destroys the power, leaving Peyton List enough of a distraction to escape. No one in the room seems to notice that she's missing until they're asked to give a head count. Even though one of the chairs is empty. Peyton gets in a scuffle with one of the Black Mask Jason guards, but she's saved by Logan Paul. They get into an elevator shaft, where Logan tries to morally call out her actions with the Cyber Adderall. He's all like, You profit from this horrid system by making a device to sell to people that helps them pass tests. And I'm all like, yeah, but if she didn't do that, all those people would just die. Peyton is all like, yeah, well, my mom is dead. And Logan Paul is all like, well, you so, like, deep, man. So while this is happening, the whole school is under lockdown as no one is allowed to leave until the trespassers are caught. 
This causes a frenzy as angry parents want to know where their children are, possibly disrupting the governor's political career. Through some crazy shenanigans, Logan Paul ends up in a science room where he's attacked by a guard. Cut to some other shit, cut back, it's pretty clear what's happened here. While Logan goes off to pretend to be a guard, Peyton breaks into the main computer room and manages to get inside the secret computer files that proves that she passed the test. And she is able to send these to her friend, the hacker, who leaks it to the press. This is bad. Uh, you gotta shut it down. You gotta shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down! No so he's just gonna have another fit. Is he gonna break something? Again? <laughs> Seeing the school exposed for faking their results, the governor makes the call to have the correct kids put in the execution chairs. Get her out of here. No! Get her out of here! To make the political message that the thinning is the right path for the future, no matter the sacrifice. Bro, that's my throwing arm, bro! What do you mean, bro? They're all jacks. <laughs> it's every day, bro! <laughs> The Pauls would definitely be executed <laughs> if this was real. That's why it's so ironic. This means that Logan Paul is put in the spot that he was supposed to be all along. And he dies! Sure, yeah. I'll pretend to buy that. I mean, it's much more likely that they just knocked him out and put him into slave labor or something. Oh, there we go! Oh, yeah, look, all the dead kids make iPads! What a twist! Hey, Miley Cyrus is alive! That's always good to know. I watched this movie the first time with my friends Wyatt and Rob, and afterwards, because we were so bored, we ended up watching an old film that Rob had made in middle school, about a murderer who wears a Snuggie. What I came to notice is that Rob's film has an equally stupid premise to that of The Thinning, and that both the writers of this film and Rob at age 14 had used the exact same tactics to try and trick the audience into thinking that there's something cool to be seen out of the smoldering pile of dog shit. Things like killing off some of the main characters, having a twist about the identity of one of the main characters, and ending on a stupid cliffhanger for a sequel that will never exist because it makes it seem more mysterious. The Thinning really wants you to think that it's super smart, super clever, and super unique, but in actuality, it just comes across as juvenile. Logan Paul shouldn't be allowed to be in anything but vlogs. He doesn't seem like an action hero or a criminal investigator or whatever he's meant to be. He just seems like Logan Paul, but putting on less of a face than he usually does in his regular videos. There were no real standout performances in this movie. Sure, there was nothing career ending, and I guess these people proved that they could emote to us just as well as they do to their audiences. But it still comes across like one of those Nickelodeon Fred movies. The best I can say about anyone here is that the governor honestly seems like the kind of guy who would be cast as a generic president in a real movie. Not like a leading role or anything, maybe like an X-Men cameo. Otherwise, there's not a lot of fun to be had here, because it's clear that the writers weren't actually trying to consider the repercussions of the world for which they had created. In short, if you haven't cared about standardized testing in the last two years, you will be incredibly bored throughout the running time of this feature. If this is the best that YouTube Red has to offer, then I'm not shocked that so few people actually care about the exclusive content on the app. It's hard to imagine their attempt to compete with Netflix and Hulu to succeed when they're running things like this. Or maybe I'm just out of touch, 10 years too old and one Jake Paul subscription too short of understanding how anyone younger than me could possibly enjoy this kind of crap. Either way, I've been quitting reviews, and that's all you need.